Hello and welcome to Look North, our top story tonight. We'll hear more from our medalists and their families back home. Also tonight, plans for a solar farm the size of 1,300 football pitches meets opposition in South Yorkshire. A meeting will take place tonight. A charity that helps hoarders to clear out their homes gets £400,000 from the National Lottery. And how Leeds Beckett University is setting the pace for one Olympic hopeful in a specially made heat chamber. And it's been another very warm day out there today, but if you're not a fan of the warmth, you'll be happy to hear something fresher on the way this weekend. I'll have the very latest towards the end of the programme. Some news and uh, residents in a Doncaster village are stepping up their campaign against what would be one of the largest solar farms in the country. Tonight they're holding a meeting to discuss how they can oppose the huge development on more than a thousand acres of farmland. The proposal would generate electricity for 75,000 homes. Our business correspondent Spencer Stokes reports from Fenwick. A new power station on this South Yorkshire farmland, not in the traditional sense with cooling towers and giant generators, but solar panels lined up across fields near the village of Fenwick. Over a thousand acres are going to be totally obliterated of this beautiful countryside. Um, the wildlife, we've got buzzards, we've got bats, we've got deers, uh, we've got ramblers, cyclists use this and have done for generations and generations. Applications for solar farms are growing, with the new government saying it wants to triple the number. The Fenwick proposal would be one of the largest in the UK. They are industrialising the countryside. There's no other description for it than replacing grass and wheat and crops and edge rows with the glass and the metal panels. If it gets the go-ahead, the solar farm will cover 536 hectares of land. In comparison, Doncaster's former airport covered 420 hectares. It would generate enough power for 75,000 homes. The UK's largest power station down the road at Drax powers around 4 million homes. And the pylons and cables that link into Drax and other now-closed power stations provide easy access to the grid. Multiple landowners are negotiating with the energy company to lease their fields. One farmer told us it had been so wet over the last year they couldn't plant any crops and solar is a way of guaranteeing an income. Developments like Fenwick are, are predominantly proposed on, on low-grade land that is farmed for crops and, and farming itself is an intensive process. Operational solar farms would create you know, large areas of undisturbed grassland um, and in those areas, you know, insects um, and microorganisms um, can flourish. The campaigners fear the landscape will be completely transformed and think other sites should be prioritised if the UK is to meet its net zero target. So if solar panels aren't going to be built here, where should they go? Well, there are plenty of other brownfield sites around Doncaster. Um, there has been suggestions of uh, the airport um, and on roofs of buildings of supermarkets that there are being developed around Doncaster, um, sites of industrial that you know could be used for doing this. The size of the scheme means the application would normally be decided by the Energy Secretary, but that's a job held by the local MP, Ed Miliband, so another minister will have the final say on whether this rural corner of Doncaster switches from growing crops to harvesting sunlight. Spencer Stokes, BBC Look North, Fenwick. Some more news from around the region and a website host from Leeds who allowed videos encouraging terrorism and mass shootings has been jailed. Far-right extremist Colin McNeil ran a social network site glorifying murderers and sharing racist views. He pleaded guilty to four terrorism offences and was handed an 11-year extended sentence. The website influenced an American teenager to kill 10 people in a racially motivated mass shooting in New York State. West Yorkshire Fire Service say the wildfire at Meltham near Huddersfield, which took three days to put out, was likely to be caused by someone having a barbecue. Firefighters have confirmed that they found a disposable barbecue close to where the fire began. They're urging people not to bring these onto the moors because of the devastation they can cause. 
Now, a community organisation in York that helps hoarders to clear out their homes has been given nearly £400,000 by the National Lottery. Michaela Shaw set up Community Bees six years ago when she realised some hoarders were living in houses that were unsafe because of pests and fire hazards. Cathy Killick reports. So, Alice is just going to start putting newspapers in, yeah? Yeah. So if, are we all right just putting the newspapers yes, in? Yes. Nothing in the newspapers? No? no? Happy with that? Yeah. It should be his lounge, but the rooms in John Wilson's house have become unrecognisable, submerged in clutter and rubbish. Tai Chi. By seeing my lovely mush <laughs> once a fortnight, you, you know, we're going to keep on top of it, aren't we? Now, with help from Michaela and Alice at Community Bees, the house is slowly being cleared. The company works with the most isolated and loneliest of people, and that is people that are hoarders mainly. And I want to write a, I want to write a book. You want to write a book? I, I listened to her talk and, for the, and she listened, and she didn't try to, to control you, she let you talk and go through it, and that's worked for me more than people saying, oh, we'll, we can clear it in a couple of days. Hoarding is a complex condition. John buys newspapers he never reads and cuddly toys that stay in their boxes. It started after his mother died. Due to a mix-up, John didn't get to the hospital in time. I lost a bit of focus in that because I thought, you know, my mother and my father, we were a very close family. I was there for my dad dying, but not my mother, and I should have been there because I promised my dad to look after my mum. And that was part of a thing of punishing yourself and never forgiving yourself. With us working, on a one-to-one, -one, very slowly, understanding and letting them talk if they want to talk. We don't ask questions, that's entirely up to them if they want to talk. And having a laugh with them as we go, it works. I'll put these on here. Ian and Leslie Cooper have just downsized from a three-bedroom house into a bungalow. Leslie has Alzheimer's and Ian had a lifetime's collection of china. They needed Michaela's help. She's very good is Michaela. You know, she'll come and help us, and nothing's too much trouble for her. And all the things we don't want, we give to her to sell on for other people, to help other people. Hundreds of these, look. Oh, Lily put laying houses. Yes, I thought there might be some. Now that can go. What about this one with the bus? Yeah, we're keeping that. That's one. nice, isn't it? I just don't, I, I just think that the old fashioned things are better than the way they are today. And I've seen a thing now, I, oh, sure. I think, oh, we do like that. Well, we'll have to have that. But uh, it's a thing I shouldn't do now. The move has freed up a family home for other council tenants and Ian loves their new space. John, meanwhile, is slowly changing his mindset and feels optimistic that he can get better with the support. Just put these in the drive. And lottery yeah. money given to community bees will let them help others trapped by possessions they neither need nor want. Kathy Killick, BBC Look North, York. And if you or someone you know has been affected by the issues raised in tonight's report, you can contact the BBC Action Line via bbc.co.uk forward slash action line for details of organisations which offer advice and support. Now let's return to the Olympics and temperatures have been rising in Paris as the athletics gets underway. Team GB marathon runner Phil Sesserman has been using a special heat chamber in Leeds to prepare for his event next weekend. Kassa Alom from the BBC's Climate Question podcast has been to find out more. Got 20 seconds. Phil Sesman is one of the UK's fastest marathon runners. Just over a year ago, he was a junior doctor in the NHS. Then the 31-year-old beat Sir Mo Farah in the London Marathon. And now he's preparing for his first Olympics. I can't wait, to be really honest. Um, yeah, really excited. Like, I've worked really hard for a long time and this is a lot further than I ever thought I'd get really in the sport. And to know that I'm kind of been here training for years and years and going to be kind of competing at kind of the pinnacle of the sport, it's, yeah, it's really exciting. Like every Olympian, Phil has his eye on the weather forecast. Paris has had 23 heat waves since 2010, according to Météo France. And climate change is making extreme temperatures more likely. The race is in August in Paris, so it can be really warm. Um, so the big thing is just kind of 
making sure that we were prepared for that. And there's always a chance that there's a heat wave as well um, that we've seen in, in Europe over the last few years um, through the summers. And if it was going to be like that, then we want to make sure that we're really, really well prepared. One of the ways to do this is running in 40 degree heat in this specialist chamber at Leeds Beckett University. Phil's team are monitoring his blood plasma levels, perceived effort and heart rate so they can see how his body and mind are handling the higher temperatures. So it'll promote a series of different physiological adaptations that'll mean that he can lose heat more effectively and he perceptually feels more comfortable in the hot environment, so that'll be better for pacing and also then reduce the risk of like external heat stroke. So how much of an impact is this going to have on his performance on race day? It could only be, you know, one or two percent, but that's that's massive in elite sport. Um, so yeah, big 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 change it could have. Let's get you out. Bill, how was that? Yeah, it was really tough. Yeah, it's really hot. It's not fun in the slightest, but I can tell. Uh, yeah, I just got to do it. With training over for Phil, it's time to check out the results. And heart rate kind of was lower. Good thing is it's perceptual scales, so your thermal sensation, thermal comfort was lower than last time. Yeah. So that's all, all good. The fact that sweat rates elevated is really positive. How do you feel about that? That's, that's, a, that's a huge positive, isn't it? We've seen improvements, which is good. I definitely felt better than I did three weeks ago doing this test. Um, but, uh, yeah, we always want more as athletes. Casa Alom, BBC Look North, Leeds. And you can find out more about how Olympic athletes are training for hot conditions on the Climate Question podcast on BBC Sounds. And staying with the Olympics, well, sort of, because a care home in Rotherham is hosting its own version of the Games. Staff and residents at Moorgate Care Village have been organising their own events. Today it's balloon, volleyball and basketball. Staff say watching the Olympics has lifted spirits in the home and got the residents moving. I just thought it would be a bit of a bit of fun, a bit of friendly competition uh, between the homes, and the residents absolutely love it. They've really thrown themselves into it. We're really enjoying Olympics. We're having a little bit of everything, We're all practicing and trying to win. It's fun. Yeah, it's a scene. <laughs> Very impressive indeed. It just shows you you don't need expensive equipment to have a little bit of fun with sports. Yeah, exactly. You've got some balloons? Fancy uh, games? I've always got a packet of balloons, <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll have a little game later. Well, it's been lovely out there today weather-wise. Uh, we started off uh, with a beautiful start to the day. Lengthy spells of sunshine this morning. This was taken first thing in Barnsley. Uh, but this afternoon, there has been quite a bit of cloud building for us, but it has stayed very warm. So temperatures for many of us in the mid-twenties cooling though through this weekend so thank you as always for sending in your pictures if you'd like your picture on the telly you can send it in, in via social media or you can head straight to the weather watchers website so through tomorrow it's actually going to be a lovely day for us it's looking largely dry there'll be good spells of sunshine around but as i mentioned much cooler cooler it's this cold front that's going to work its way through sinking south eastwards that's going to introduce some showery rain for us out there tonight uh, but just behind a fresher air mass through Saturday and Sunday uh, but both days not too bad just more cloud around through the day on Sunday so we're ending this evening with some late sunny spells cloud amounts will increase through the night with some showery rain having said that most of that rain is actually going to clear quite quickly temperatures will fall away to around 15 to 16 degrees a very mild start to our Saturday morning see you next high waters we've got Whitby at one minute past four tomorrow morning and then we have Scarborough at nine minutes past four so as I mentioned a mild and muggy start to Saturday morning. Any lingering showers across South Yorkshire will clear first thing. The rest of the day, those sunny spells will become more widespread, a bit of patchy cloud around, and it is going to be dry for all areas. In that sunshine, highs of around 20 degrees. If you're not a fan of the warmth, really cooling down through this weekend. So Sunday, similar temperatures for us. Uh, around the seasonal average, there's going to be quite a bit of cloud around, though, through the course of the day. That's cloud gonna, that cloud's going to linger through the morning and afternoon and then Monday up to 24 degrees it's just for one day uh, the rest of the week again our temperatures will be around 20 to 21 degrees so not as warm as this week and it will turn a little bit more unsettled Amanda well uh, no complaints here thank you very much <laughs> Katarina thank you
Now, uh, as we've been seeing, it's been a golden week for our region's competitors at the Olympics and more medal hopefuls are in action this weekend. We'll leave you tonight with some of the most memorable moments of Paris 2024 so far. But from all the tea time here, good night.